Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Tuesday evening devotion. I'm so glad that we are here once again as the followers and believers and, of course, children of the Lord. I think it's just, just but proper for us to come together to worship Him, to honor Him, and, of course, to listen to Him as we listen to the Word of God as well. All right? And so it's good for us to begin in coming together as one in worshiping the Lord. So join us as we come to worship our God. Be glorified, Lord. We lift your name. Just one thing remaining with the 
Shut it out. time of worship that you have given us. Indeed, this, is, this one is refreshing at the same time. It's energizing, Lord God. Seeing ourselves being one, Lord God, with you, with all the rest of your sons and daughters, wherever we are, but Lord, joining together with you, Lord. And thank you that you are not limited and bound by distance, Lord. You are everywhere, Lord, wherever your children are. You are there. And so, God, thank you for this time of worship. We just want to honor you and praise you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for meeting us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, so once again, thank you for joining us, or maybe I should say, worshiping with us in this Tuesday evening devotion that we have. So as we continue with our discussion about who God is in knowing God, you know, I believe it's good for us to know about how generous God is over our lives. Now, think about this. Um, if you know a person who is so generous, 
Do you think that person's generosity outweighs God's generosity? Magandang tanong yun, di ba? Kasi marami po tayong kilala na taong generous talaga, but if we're going to um, uh, we're going to allow them to stand side by side with God in the area of generosity, I, I think, and I'm pretty sure, you know, they're not going to um, be at least on the level on God's generosity. And so today, we'll be talking about how generous God is according to what the psalmist penned. And it's found in Psalm 65. And I want to go through the verses and learn from the psalmist how generous God is to us. All right? And so verse 1 says, Praise is due to you, O God, in Zion, and to you shall vow, vows be performed. O you who hear prayer, to you shall all flesh come. Look at this. The Holy One, the God of Zion, He said, the psalmist says, all vows should be made only for Him because there's only one who is worthy of our um, service and honor and worship. And that is God alone. The psalmist tells us that. And verse 2 says, He's the one actually who hears prayer. And so therefore, because He's the only one who can answer all our petitions, therefore, He also said that we should come to Him. All the nations should actually come to Him because of that. Well, like what I said, marami pong tao na generous, marami pong tao that are actually truthful in meeting the needs of others or maybe our needs. But again, their generosity could never match the generosity of God. God is the one who answers our prayers. And so therefore, therefore, David said, we should come to God, all the nations of the earth. Verse 3, look at this. One of the reasons why we have to come to the Lord is actually penned also here in, in the following verses. Verse he says, When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. I like this verse. It's because it talks about our transgressions. It talks about our sins. It talks about our um, shortcomings and frailtiness. And yet, it seems like parang tunog po nito, parang tunog po ng verse na to is actually Psalms 110 verse 3. Ano nakalagay po doon? God does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. That's so marvelous. That's awesome. I say it again. How do God deal with you? He deal with us not according to our sins, not according to our iniquities or transgressions or fault or shortcomings. He deals with us with His righteousness. Okay, according to this verse. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. How do we deal with us? Well, He deal with us as if He's the one who sinned, as if His Son is the one who sinned, that He paid the penalty of your sins and my sins. And so God will deal with us now in the light of a father um, welcoming His Son. That's how God deals with us. Well, for ex- let me tell you the story, and I believe you're familiar with this. I remember the prodigal son, right? After the son squandered all the wealth of his father or, or, of, that he got, received from his father and living a life that gives that uh, dishonor the name of his father and yet when he returned, his father dis, does not, did, did not dealt or did not deal with him according to what he did. But God dealt with him according to who his father was, a loving, forgiving and an accepting father. I also have a picture of a woman in Scripture that was caught red-handed, having red-handed in her, um, you know, sexual sin. Okay? Meron po siyang kasalanan. This one is marriage. So, meron po siyang kasalanan. And people said, and, and the Pharisees brought her, dragged her in the open field in front of Jesus Christ and said, okay, dapat batuhin siya sa, batuhin siya sa kamata hanggang sa mamatay because of her uh, yung pangangalun niya, alright? Because of that. And so, that's how people dealt with her. These Pharisees who are, the, who are um, great students of the law or the scholars of the law, they dealt with her harshly according to what the Scripture says, you know, or according to the law of Moses. So, the, she has to be stoned to death. But, iba po yung kay Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ dealt with her. Ano po yun? Diba sabi ni Jesus Christ, okay, sino sa inyo ang walang kasalanan ang siyang unang maghagis ng bato? Alright, to this woman. And so, 
she actually was confronted by the mercy and grace of God. And that is the, and that is the generosity. That's the righteousness of God that we're talking about. That's how generous God is. That in spite or despite of our weaknesses, despite of our sins, eh, karabi po yung pagpapaalang binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon. And one of which is forgiveness. And one of which is God will not deal with you according to your sins, according to your iniquity. Actually, He dealt His Son in your behalf, in my behalf. And that is the greatest manifestations of God's generosity, at least in, the, in this one, in, this, in the pages of the scripture that is spent by the psalmist himself. Come to think of it, sino po sa inyo rito yung, nung kayo po naging kristyano na bigla kayong tumigil sa paggawa ng kasalanan? Wala naman, di ba? We commit sins um, from time to time. And yet, God's mercy and grace is always available for you and for me. And I love that. I love the idea that God is so loving, God is so generous that He will not deal with me, with you, according to your sins, according to my sins. This is what this verse 3 says. When iniquities prevail against me, you atone for our transgressions. What a generous God that we have. In other words, He provided for us. He provided for me, for you, during our transgressions. He provided an atoning sacrifice which is actually His Son. And so that's how generous God is. Blessed is the one you chose and bring near to dwell in your courts. We shall be satisfied with goodness, with the goodness of your house, the holiness of your temple. Come to think of it, everyone has been so blessed. Why? Because all of us has been given by the Lord an equal opportunity to be with Him. Lahat po tayo, binigyan po tayo ng pagkakataon ng Panginoon na lumapit sa Kanya. It is an open invitation to all of us, to, to each and every one of us, to come to Him and to dwell in His temple. But of course, none of us will respond, you know, in, in, a, in a way that God wants us to respond. And for those who responded, David said, those who responded, responded positively, David said, Blessed are you, you are so blessed. Why? Because you're going to be satisfied in the courts of God, in the temple of the Lord. You know what? There is nothing in this world that can satisfy us. Wala po. Only the presence of God. Only God can. Lahat po tayo, we have a vacuum in our hearts that is so huge, that is so deep, that is so high, that is so wide, that nothing here on this earth could actually fill that vacuum, that void space in our hearts. And so even if you will accumulate the best of the wealth of this world or the greatest of the wealth of this world, guess what? hindi pa rin po kayo magiging satisfied dyan. Even if you're going to, you, you live in the, the most beautiful, the most luxurious house here on earth, as soon as you have that, then later on, you're no longer satisfied with it and you will long for more. Ganun po ang katotohanan dito. Why? Because, I want to say it again, there's nothing here on earth that can satisfy you, that can satisfy me. The longings, the cravings of our heart is so huge that vacuum is so wide that nothing can fill that, fill that up. And God is so generous enough, God is so big enough, that He's only the one who can fill that void in our hearts. And so that's why the psalmist says, blessed are you if you dwell in the courts of God. Blessed are we if we are living in the temple of our God. Alright? And so I hope you, we get it. Verse 6, the one who by his strength, Establish the mountains, being girded with might, who stills the roaring of the seas, the roaring of the waves, and tumults of the people, the peoples. Well, it, it reminded me of the time when Jesus Christ silenced the roaring of the seas when he rebuked the, the wind, right? And so that's how God, you know, how, how generous God is. That He will provide not just for our need, but He will also provide for our salvation. He provides not just salvation of our souls, but even our salvations here on earth. And so they were saved actually from drowning because Jesus Christ provided a way for them to be saved. When He um, rebuked the wind. And that's 
what the psalmist says here as well. So that those who dwell at the ends of the earth are in awe at your signs. You make the going out of the morning and the evening and the shout and the evening to shout for joy. Kaling ano? Because of the generosity of God to provide for our needs, not just temporary needs, but even eternal needs. In His ways, in the miraculous ways of God, in the ways that we cannot think of, then the psalmist says, the whole world will actually be in awe, will be shocked. Ah, parang, ah, that's how God provided? That's how God, you know, silenced the, the, the raging of the seas? It, it's so powerful. It's so amazing. And so the whole world will be in awe because of that. In other words, in other words there's no one that the whole world will really claim and, and claim as the one true God aside from the God of the Bible, and that is the Lord, our, and our Lord Jesus Christ Himself. And look at this. When He said, you make the going out of the morning and the evening to shout for joy. It speaks of God's generosity for you and for me then. You know, tayo po, tayo mga tao, we are actually naturally hardworking. When I'm saying that, when I said that, well, iba nga po sa atin, hindi na, natutu- hindi na po natutulog eh, para lang magtrabaho, just to finish the task that they would like to finish, or the assignment, or the work that they would like to finish. But God is saying, no, 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 I actually ordained the coming of the sun, and the setting, and it's setting down, and the coming of the stars and the moons, that says, it's about time for you to rest. It's part of God's generosity to tell you and to remind us that there are actually a moment for us to work and a moment for us to rest. And I think God is so loving enough to remind us that. Okay? And so, think about this. Kapag tayo po, eh, inaabuso po natin ng ating sarili that we don't actually have enough sleep, nagkakaroon tayo ng problema, di ba? Minsan may mga sakit and all. So, God is so mindful of you. God is so mindful of me that He knew your limitation, my limitation. So therefore, He sets the boundaries where sun will shine and where it will set and the stars and the moons on the, on the other hand. It's because of you, because of me, because of God being so thoughtful about you. And that's a picture of God's generosity. I hope you're seeing that. So you visit the earth and, the wa- and water it and greatly enrich it. The rivers of God is full of water. He provide their grains for you have prepared it you water its furrows abundantly, settling its ridges, softening it with showers and blessing its growth. Look at this. Even the meadows, even the, the, the earth, God is actually covering it with vegetations. He watered it. He caused the sun to shine to, uh, to allow this photosynthesis to take effect so that there will be food for you and for me. It's God's doing. It's God's, it's God's manifestation of His, of His generosity to us. You crown the year with, with your bounty. I love this. You crown the year with your bounty. You know what? Our blessings come from the Lord. Maybe you're saying, hindi, kasi masipag po ako eh. Hindi, kasi galing ko kasi magtrabaho eh. Well, I want you to realize this. Maraya pong tao na walang trabaho. Maraya pong tao na tambay for many years and yet they're still alive. Why? Because it is God who provides. So, that one goes directly with our idea that it's because of our, because of our greatness and goodness that we are being amply supplied, that we are being provided for. But how about those tampai? How about those who doesn't have work and yet God is sustaining them? God is just saying that I'm the one who provides. Alright? And so, verse 12, the pastors of the wilderness overflow. The hills gird themselves with joy. The meadows clothe themselves with flocks. I like the picture here. Think about the meadows being clothed with flocks. In other words, a green pasture, nagkakaroon po ng kulay kasi nga may mga hayop na pumupunta. That's how, that's how you know, the psalmist says pic, or picture this out to, in our mind. Ang ganda, no? So, o nga, no? Because of God's generosity, because God caused the rain to pour, be poured out, and so there's vegetations greenery left and right. And so, it enables the flock, of course, or to come and, and, and uh, graze upon, you know, this grass. And so, there's a picture of abundance. And it's all because of God's generosity, all of God's doings. None of us could actually um, plan it. Si Lord po ang gumawa ng lahat ng yan. 
Alright? So in other words, God is just thinking about you and, and me. God is actually sustaining the whole earth. He sustains the birds. He sustains the animals. He sustains plants. He causes them to grow. And so, that's how generous God is. Verse 13, The meadows clothe them themselves with flocks, and valleys deck themselves with grain. They shout and sing together for joy. You see? It's so amazing on how the psalmist described the generosity of God. That He is not just sustaining the need of a, of a person or human beings. He sustains the entire world. And that is the picture of His generosity. He provided for our food, for our sustenance. He provided for our salvation. Not just salvation out of, from danger here on earth, but the greatest salvation which is salvation from the danger of being damned forever on, in hell. That's the picture of God's, that's, that's God's generosity. And so think about this. I want you to realize this one. And I close with this one. You know what? If God can provide for the need of the entire universe, do you think God is not generous enough to provide for your need? To provide for your household? Are we indeed of tuition fee for our children? If God can provide for the need of the whole earth, do you think God is not generous enough to provide for the tuition fee? To provide for our daily sustenance? You know what? I want you to think about this. After I have said all of this, read all of these verses and said so much, if I'm going to um, summarize that in one line, it, mu- it must be like this. There is no need that God's generosity could not, meet, could not meet. Or there's no need that God's generosity cannot meet. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for tonight, Lord. Thank you that we can come to you, Lord God, secured, assured of our future, knowing, Lord God, that there is no need that your generosity cannot meet. Lord, even before we ask of it, in fact, you know it already. And so, God, all that we can say is thank you. Thank you, God, for being so generous. Lord, thank you for allowing us to realize that if you can sustain the need of the entire world, the entire universe, so, Lord, so much so that you can sustain me that you can provide for my need, that you can provide for my children, you can provide for our future. If you have provided for the greatest need of mankind, and that is salvation from hell by the death of your Son, which is the greatest manifestation of your generosity, how much more with all graciousness will you not provide for our menial needs, for the needs that we have? What an assurance, Lord God. And so I thank you for that, Lord. Thank you, God. There is no need that is so big that could exhaust and put an end to your unending resources. We thank you for that, Lord. We honor you. And and I believe, Lord, it's actually good for us to come to you once again and worship you. And so, you know what? It's good for us to once again come to God and just be in awe as we come to worship the Lord. So I want to invite everybody, let's come once again and give honor and glory and worship to the one who is deserving of it. And that is our Lord Jesus Christ. Come, let us worship the Lord. In the power of resurrection, in the sharing of suffering, to be shaped into your
Lord, thank you. For indeed, every time that we come to you, Lord God, to worship you, we can always feel your presence. Very reassuring, Lord God. Very refreshing at the same time. And Lord, we are being strengthened as we come to worship you, God. And thank you for reminding us of how generous you are over our lives. Thank you, God. We praise you for that, Lord. And of course, for the rest of us, I hope that we are all blessed. Thank you for attending our Tuesday evening devotion. Let me just pray for you as we, as we end. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift His countenance upon you and give you peace in the mighty name, in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I pray this prayer and everybody will say, Amen and Amen. Alright guys, God bless you all. See you again on our next Tuesday evening devotion.